Hello, friends, and welcome to another figure study where we appreciate the form in Transformers. Today, we are taking a look at Masterpiece Road Rage. Funny story about Road Rage here. I picked up a knockoff Masterpiece Road Rage a couple of months back. It was on sale. It was like 25 bucks. I figured... 25 bucks, $5 shipping, 30 bucks for a knockoff masterpiece figure. Not bad. So I got knockoff Road Rage, and I thought knockoff Road Rage was pretty cool, but there were a few pretty significant issues with the figure. And it just kind of made me want actual masterpiece Road Rage. So I went and got myself the official one. So I'm not going to do a comparison to this and the knockoff because they're more or less the same. It's just like some overall minor differences mostly in terms of quality and like paint here and there is just like a little bit sloppier on the knockoff i will say the knockoff has rubber tires whereas the masterpiece has just regular plastic tires but i feel like the regular plastic tires are a small price to pay when you have a figure that uh you don't have to unscrew parts in order to transform it because things stick so much Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Road Rage. Road Rage is a very nice looking Corvette. I believe a Stingray. Which is great because I'm not a car guy, but I've always had a bit of a fondness for the Stingray. Just because like I like the the angled, like swooping front end, like over the tires. It just it's a neat looking car. And yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> I mean, yes, Road Rage is more or less just a repainted version of Trax, but I don't give a crap about Trax, honestly. And I honestly didn't know who Road Rage was until I looked up the figure, but uh, yeah, I don't really like Trax. I don't care about Trax. I think the red car looks better than a blue car. And one of the main things that bugged me about Trax is the fact that you could see his giant white head through the windshield very easily. Whereas with Road Rage, since the head is darker, it does not show up anywhere near as easily as Trax's head does, which I'm all about. So yeah, the overall shape of the car, very nice. I don't know how 100% accurate it might be, but it looks really, really good. There's not a ton of paint on the outside, but there doesn't really need to be. There are the uh, side mirrors, which they actually put a little bit of paint on, which is really cool of them to do. And of course, you've got the hood detail, which looks nice. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of flames on a car, but hey, it is what it is. I mean, it looks nice. It seems to be done well. It's just not a particular, it's not a design that I've ever had much fondness for. And they've got the Corvette symbol there, which is very nice. And the molding for the flip-up headlights. I always liked cars with flip-up headlights. I th thought they looked a lot cooler with the headlights not flipped up. But I always thought, you know, they make for a nice sleek shape. And the grill in the front, nicely painted. Spot for a license plate there, too. Silver wheel, or silver hubcaps, rims, whatever you want to call them. Which looks like it's not 100%. Like, a little bit sloppy there, maybe, on the edges, but, uh, eh. I'm just a fan of whenever they paint the rims. I, I, it's always kind of, an, not annoying to me, but it's just a shame when they don't, like, paint anything on the on the wheels. And then, of course, in the back, you have another Corvette symbol, and rear lights, which I am glad they painted. Even though the shade is similar to the plastic there, they still are noticeably painted, which is nice. And then another spot for the license, which doesn't actually have so yeah uh, one other thing that I was kind of really appreciating in terms of the official version as opposed to the knockoff the color discrepancy between this panel here and the rest of the of the top pardon me the top of the car is much much greater in the knockoff and these bits here that flip up to become the tail wings for the uh, flying car mode there's like some really sloppy paintwork around the edges, so these stand out a lot more on the knockoff. <sighs> I swear, one of these days, 
I'm going to shoot this camera off into the sun. Yet again, it ran out of space without properly telling me and I kept recording like a doof. Anyway, as I was saying, Road Rage just has a very solid little car. I love how everything compacts down, and I love how everything expands out for robot mode. It's just, it's a very, very nice, tight design. I'm really into it. Yeah. <laughs> very cool car. But I'm, as per usual, more fond of the robot mode than the car mode, so we're going to take a look at that. And here we have masterpiece road rage in her robot mode and this is very cool to me now i know ultimately the look is very much like tracks aside from the head the pelvis area and the thighs it's the exact same mold although the hands might be a little different i don't entirely know but uh i don't care because screw tracks road rage is much more awesome to me I like this color scheme a lot better than the blue. And again, you know, she doesn't have that like enormously white head that just stands out in vehicle mode. But yeah, here it just, this overall looks really nice to me. I like how she's predominantly red with like some black and some white highlights. And like, yeah, I know it's fundamentally tracks, but like just the silhouette's really cool. The almost agile looking frame works really well I think and I love how not only is she the first masterpiece lady uh, transformer I think technically she's still the only one um, but it's just this all works really well for a uh, like for a, a womanly robot shape like she doesn't have to have you know a giant chest or rc's you know fertility symbol hips or anything like that like this totally can read as a lady and i think that's great like there's no no absurd pandering or anything like that it's just you know like the overall thinness the the uh, just overall shape it all it works and of course I have a probably I don't remember if I mentioned this in any previous videos or not but I actually have a bit of a soft spot when it comes to butt kicking ladies um, for example Mass Effect never played as the guy Shepard because he's just stupid generic space marine Lady Shepard much more awesome anyway so I have a soft spot for butt kicking ladies and road rage from what i've read up on the character is a butt kicking lady and plus you know masterpiece non guy transformer it's just I, I i how could i not but yeah she looks really cool the head i think it's a nice head the helmet i <laughs> I mean, I get that this plastic needs to kind of match in the overall scheme. So, you know, they've got the darker blue of the wings matches the darker blue of the helmet. But the problem is, it's dark enough that when viewed from a distance, especially not under, like, ideal lighting, the head kind of gets lost just because it's so dark. Like, the face still stands out, but the head itself just gets a little lost in all the darkness back there, which is kind of a shame. But it is a good-looking head, nice-looking face, nicely painted face, from, from what I can see from this angle looking awkwardly down at the camera. You can paint it a little bit on the top there, although that also is hard to read at a distance, that little red bit up there. But still, it's nice. And it's funny, in all the promo shots and whatnot that I saw, I was not a fan of this white up here, because I felt like that stood out way too much and was distracting. And even in the video, it like it kind of looks a little bit out of place. But in person, this doesn't bother me at all. Like I thought it would, but no, I think it just it works and it breaks up the sort of overall darker tone monotony in the uh, upper torso area. 
And then of course you've got the arms, which nothing too spectacular, nothing to write home about, but they do the job. And I like that there's a little bit of detail there to just kind of break up that would have otherwise just been a big dark slab. And the hands look nice enough. The feet, the shins, all that stuff looks nice. This pattern doesn't really, I don't know, it's weird to me. Almost like they tried to give her robotic shoelaces or like maybe even sandals. It's just like a strange design there, but color wise, I think it works. And I like how the shins just kind of break up the color a little bit more. Similar shade right there to just kind of pull everything together. It all looks good. And I really, really like how this overall figure shape turned out. Like the big chunky, like these are like Mega Man style boots. I think that just looks really cool. <laughs> and it's a kind of a shame with the backpack and when viewed from the side, it looks a little bit weird. But overall, though, I think very cool looking figure. I, I do have some issues with the tires as shoulders, like just they make articulation a little weird with the wings back there. But I think the look is really nice. And I like having the car cab, not cab, but like the top section of the car is like the, the chest area. I think that's really neat. One thing that I don't understand about this or any other figure. From what I can tell, I think this is normal for a lot of the other figures that use this mold. And like the knockoff does this, the official one does this. I don't understand why, but there's this, I noticed this pin right here in front of the pelvis that made it look like this could hinge up. And it, in fact, it can. And I don't understand why. I mean, there's detail under there. There's, there's even a little bit of detail on the underside here. And that's great that there's detail there, but why is it there? This serves no purpose, like, at all. It's not something that you would do for the transformation because this part's pointing down in vehicle mode, and if you tried to fold it out, the car would just be, like, you know, that much off the ground and the tires wouldn't even touch. It's... I just don't understand why that's there. It's weird. And I'm assuming it's on tracks as well. And, uh, oh, what's the Decepticon's name? Something stupid. It's like Leadfoot or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know why that's there, but whatever. Overall, though, I just, I think this figure is really neat. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I spent the money on the knockoff just to buy the, the uh, official figure, like, a couple of weeks later, but I like the official figure enough that I guess it's you know, overall worth it because the knockoff, it's not a terrible figure. It just doesn't quite function properly, but hey, Road Rage taken on her own. Very cool. And I'm sure just overall tracks is cool too as far as like an engineering thing goes. I just don't like his look. I don't like that bright blue. I don't like the white helmet. I've said that already, but yeah. For me, Road Rage is a much better fit, and I'm very happy to have her with my other Masterpiece and Masterpiece alike figures. So anyway, that has been my look at Takara's Masterpiece Road Rage. I forget the number, and I'm not going to look it up. It'll be in the description, so just check down there. I might even put it up here, but I probably won't because I'm lazy. Anyway, Thank you, everybody, for watching. As per usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three will make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.